Let me give you another one. It's quite possible, whatever is the inequality here, for something to occur in the economy which makes the capitalist euphoric or makes the capital depressed. Euphoric. Uh, a new discovery of uh, a way to produce energy makes them happy. They increase their K-star plus lambda, even if the inequality is going like this. Because they've become so happy that, that even the, in the face of this extra cost, they're will, they willing to take on uh, uh, more, more risk because th all of a sudden they feel good now about what they think is going to be the future. On the other hand, it's also possible that a fall in stock prices could get them so scared that they cut back in case star plus lambda even if the inequality is going this way. That is, the, the fall in a stock price which may have absolutely nothing to do with this particular industry. Okay, because that's, a, that's an effect in the stock market. But if the stock market falls, that can change the mood of capitalists from euphoria to becoming dour and worried about the future, and hence they can diminish their K-star plus lambda times the multiplier. It has an impact upon the economy. That's the great Keynesian contribution to, to analyzing uh, business investment uh, in a capitalist economy. It's continually being pushed and pulled I'm going to use my language now, not Keynes. It's continually being overdetermined by the ideas of the capitalists of what's going to happen um, in the future. And anything can change that, and therefore, that is, can change their, their ideas about the future and hence change their case star plus lambda. Okay? So, if, they, if it goes this way, well, the expansion will continue, and there's no necessity for the decline. If it goes this way, then you will have a contraction. Okay? And so we need to add the uncertainty into this. And let me just, to, for, to complete this, uh, this was capitalists in the consumer good industry. We also can add to this capitalists, so this is one analysis, capitalists in means of production industries. By the same logic here, they get a surplus, okay, and I'm, I'm uh, picking up what we did last time, plus a subsumed class revenue. Remember, because they're selling their means of their oil at a greater price than its unit value. That's what this, they're selling it to other capitalists. Okay. And here again, we don't know the sign. We have the uncertainty on the part of this part of the economy as well, because they have to make their subsumed class payments for this. But in terms of, of uh, uh, this benefit, we have the cost they have to make subsumed class payments to the workers. I'm going to leave this term off because uh, the ca these capitalists are producing the means of production, so it doesn't make any sense that is it where they're producing and selling it to themselves. But they still have to pay a higher price of labor power to the workers. So I don't know, and nor do you, and nor does anyone else what the sign is in. This is as uncertain as is the sign here. So we have in the two great industries in capitalism, the wage good industry and the means of production industry. Marx in volume three of Capital calls the wage good industry department two and calls the capital good industry, the means of production department one. So in the two great departments, department one, means of production, Department two, wage good industries, these two great departments, we have this uncertainty, and it's possible at any moment for it to go one way or the other. So let me uh, summarize all this. I, let me get rid of this. Capitalist, capitalist expansion, K star plus lambda is going up. That increases the demands for labor power. That increases the demands for means of production. So we have K star plus lambda increasing. That's our expansion. That has impacts on the labor market. That increases the demand for labor power, increases the demand for means of production. So that's our K star. But that also increases the demand for credit increases the demand for land, increases the demand for uh, managers, and so forth and so forth, etc. 
So that's our impact on these, on these markets. Then, as I argued with you, this in turn implies increases of prices for labor power, increase in prices of means of production, increase in prices of credit, interest rate, increases in, in the rents, increase in the salaries of managers as those markets get impacted. And it's possible then that this result here, over here, it's possible that this could lead to a contraction. Because you have set in motion these inflationary conditions in the economy and at any moment that could end up with a contraction and the demands for labor power and means of production and managers and so forth can start shifting back to the, to the left. You have that reserve army, the unemployment argument of, of, of Marx. So you have the possibility of crisis for capitalism, contraction, crisis for capitalism. As a result of its expansion, that is, the costs of of production rise, and the cost of those individuals who enable production also rise. Okay, the enabler is uh, over here, and then the direct inputs into production over here. So, the contraction is the crisis for capitalism as a result of its ex of its expansion. Okay. And then K stop plus lambda falls, implying the rise sets in motion the conditions of existence for the fall, the business cycle. Okay? On the other hand, this need not happen. There's no necessity for this. Why? Because this very increase may increase supplies of labor power. What's that all about? I'll do that next time. What that is about is that there may be um, uh, immigration into a country, so the supply of labor power may shift to the right. In the United States, women may enter the labor force, leave the household, and that'll shift the supply of labor power to the right. Okay? But you also can have um, increase in the demand for uh, means of production, Increase in the demand for uh, uh, wage goods. This is C goods and V goods. Okay, and that can serve to have capitalists um, expand. And I'm going to show you next time um, when this happens that expansion, that very expansion in these markets may set in motion a shift in supply of goods and services. Okay, you can also have changes in technology such that the demand for labor power doesn't shift to the right as much. It doesn't, sh it shifts, but it doesn't shift to the right as much as expected. What's that all about? That's a rise in the composition of capital. That's C over C plus V um, may rise. You can have the state stepping in to offset the rising interest rate by increasing the supply of credit, the supply of money in the society to offset an increased um, interest rate. That's what the state is doing now. You can have um, 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 imports of new means of production. That is, the supply of means of production would shift to the right. And of course, imports, increased imports of V-goods such that the supply of, of, uh, of uh, automobiles shifts to the right and hence there's less of a tendency for the prices to rise and you don't get this. So in other words, it's quite possible to put all this together to have offsetting effects in all these different markets so, for, uh, so that the uh, you know, recession um, uh, does not occur. And that's what I'm going to examine next time is these, the possibility of these different shiftings so we get a much more nuanced and sophisticated analysis and understanding of an economy and how again it's being pushed and pulled in these different directions by the very capitalist expansion which is set in motion. Thank you.